of a name right here on Gorilla Cross uh, Network. My bad. I'm trying to get all this technical stuff going. I'm your host, Quan59, and we have a dope show for you today. A lot to talk about in sports, as always. That's what's great about doing a sports show. There's never nothing to talk about. So uh, I got my guest co-host back in the building with me from Let the Ball Bounce. Check them out every Saturday, 2 p.m. A brand new show starting this week, by the way, folks. But make sure you check out Let the Ball Bounce. Saturdays got Dre in the building. What's up with it, man? I appreciate the uh, invite again, man. What's yes, sir. Up? I appreciate you coming on and co-hosting with me a lot. And, uh, you know, doing all the sports stuff. It's fun, man. It's fun doing sports. Uh, some people stress out so much about their sports talk. And they're so mad and angry. It's fun, man. Like, you're mad about something that's going to change tomorrow. Yeah, well, you know how people are, man. They... They wake up on angry. Yeah, you know, most definitely. You know, look in the mirror and they're like, ah, I don't like what I see. I'm angry. I'm mad. Let me no be mad at somebody else. Yeah. Calm down, man. Just calm down. Calm bit. down. Uh, and got my uh, first time guest, not to the studio, but to the show. He, um, we, we argue a lot about sports. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually right. He's usually wrong. I'd say we agree more than you're leading on, but we might. Uh, but I got my man Paul from Into the West Comics in the building. What Check do, them baby. out every Thursday at 6 p.m. So he'll be on in about two hours. That's true. Um, from now, so I'll be in here. Uh, I, this has kind of been a little bit of a long time coming. We talked about me coming on here, yeah. for a little while, but I'm excited to finally be on here and talk sports in here with, uh, with you guys. And I know scheduling, you know, stuff like that gets yeah, weird. And then just, yeah. you know, I wasn't doing the show for a long time, so <laughs> just getting it back in the full yeah. swing of things. Uh, if you guys are watching live, please uh, share the live video stream and comment. Let us know where you're watching from in the comment section, um, and let us know your favorite WNBA player. 
a lot of people don't watch WNBA, but they're starting to jump in now and catch on. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul if you, before we get started, how we do at every show, uh, let us know your, your uh, favorite teams in all four major sports. And how do you eat a banana? Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go do the banana thing last. My favorite teams <laughs> in all four sports are going to be the New York Jets in the NFL, the uh, New York Yankees in the uh, MLB. Got to balance it out. Most people are giant Yankees, Jet Mets. I got to balance it out. I can't have two bad teams and two good teams. Um, and okay. then the NBA would be the Lakers and then uh, hockey. Hockey? Um, yeah. I don't really watch a lot of hockey, but obviously the I mean, Golden you Knights. Pick, you could pick WNBA, like whatever. It would definitely be the sport. Aces for WNBA, 100% okay. the Aces, yeah. And then the banana. How the do banana? You, the banana? Uh, you have to be it. honest, too. Don't, don't no, try I break to, it, like... I break it from the stem, and then I peel it. <laughs> okay. I feel like, you know, the general way you would eat a banana, yeah. and then I'd take a bite out of it. Okay. Yeah. So you don't break the banana off, you just... No, I take a bite. Yeah, I eat it the way that would look really bad in a okay. picture. I'm like, just, if you caught me in a picture fine. eating a banana... It would be very memeable. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, listen, I'm not man, too proud to eats not admit that, though. You yeah, know that's I mean? fine. You eat a banana, how are you going to eat a banana? Now, do you eat a banana different in public than you do, like, when you're just at home chilling I, and watching? I, I, I got no shame. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. It's cool. No, I mean, no, that's just one of our that's just one of our opening questions for new new uh, guests and, and right. guest co-hosts. I uh yeah, uh, I'll eat a banana the same way in front of somebody as I would in another. Like, what am I gonna do? Will they all shy about eating the banana? Eat it from the side? You could. I mean, well, I, well, I don't a, know about from the side. I use a fork. A and fork. A knife. Okay. Yeah. I would do that if I had like a <laughs> a Sunday, like a banana split. Yeah. I'd eat it with a fork and a knife. But if I just got a banana, bro. Yeah. No banana split. You, I, I don't know about a knife ice cream you don't really have to cut it you uh, might need to cut the banana though you might all right i digress <laughs> um i'm yep. just kidding man i don't i don't use a fork and a knife i i eat a banana you know in the comfort of my own home the mm. way that a banana is supposed to be eaten so are you uh, implying that you would not eat a banana outside of your own home no, outside of my own home i eat it a little different i kind of break it off you know. and then okay yeah. all right fair enough I, uh, I yeah. you, know, I, you know, I've just been in a situation before where, you know, I felt like I was being deprived of my potassium, right? Uh, because people are um, just, um, you know, enamored by the way that a person eats And they banana. don't want you to have your potassium. Right. It's, yeah. It's so, you know, uh, I got to have my potassium. Well, I, I mean, I, I can definitely advocate for that because uh, cutting weight in like college with wrestling and stuff, yeah. that I think that's part of the reason why I'll eat a banana however I please. If you've been cutting weight, if you weigh 165 <laughs> oh, yeah, you pounds and you go all the way to 141 pounds, I do not care what you think about yeah. the way I eat my banana. <laughs> and I'm, get, have... I'm getting that potassium one way or another. <laughs> We have a new meme we're going to be using. Uh, we're not going to say it because everyone's saying it these days. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, oh. there, there's something that everyone's saying, but I yeah. created uh, just a meme for it. Uh, so we'll just, you know, yeah, anytime. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I knew, I knew banana, anything going. like that. <laughs> um, we, we won't say it. We'll just, yeah. you know, you just anytime you see that, you just, know what's up. You know what you it know. is. You know what's up. Yeah. Um, it's tragic. Tragic. Yeah. And speaking of tragic, man, we're going to jump into it. Uh, O.J. Simpson. Yeah. I didn't even know he was sick because like, I talked to so many people that see him all the time out here in Vegas. Um, but he had prostate cancer, mm. which he was still out there golfing up to just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but he passed away, man. And I know there's a lot of controversy with O.J. Obviously, uh, killing people or not killing people, doing it or not doing it, or if I did it. Um but as an athlete, <laughs> yeah. he had an amazing career. I mean, I think we all knew who he was, uh, especially me and Dre growing up in the 80s and 90s. You knew OJ from being a, you know, a, a football player and then being an actor, being in a lot of movies and stuff like that. I think your generation probably knows him more for, you know, what happened. Yeah, um, sure. With, with, with his ex-wife and, and her food server boyfriend. Uh, but... You know, what do we think about this? Let's just talk about OJ a little bit. I mean, like I said, we don't need to say if he did it or not, because he did. Uh, but Trey doesn't <laughs> think so. Paul, do you think he did it? I think at this point, does like does it really matter now? I mean, because Cream, uh, my boy Cream Muller posted up that uh, he, he, was, he wasn't going to rest until he found Nicole's killer. So he either found the killer and then, I don't know. Well, I mean, if he believes that it was OJ, then his... Uh his uh, quest has come to a conclusion. Yeah, maybe he found himself. But, uh, <laughs> but no, man, I mean, someone passed away. 
OJ Simpson. It, it, it was a little shocker this morning. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. It was a shocker. Um, and I think what's more of a shocker is that someone uh, is passed away. Right. And yeah. so you look at all of the comments, you look at what everybody's saying, uh, you know, good for him and good riddance. And come on, man. See, like, that stuff, yeah. like it's that, never that, good. Though. That's that's ridiculous. Right. And so whether you agree with what his with a jury of his own peers um, uh, didn't convict him. of, yeah. Take that up with them. Yeah. Right. He got found innocent by a jury of his own peers, right? And so he served time for actually uh, in Vegas going to try to recoup some of his old memorabilia and things like that. And they basically threw him in prison. He served his time. I I, I find very astonishing that OJ already knew he had prostate cancer and he never said anything. He never let it affect the way that he was going to continue to live his life, Sure. right? He could care less. We kind of saw that with uh, 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 Chadwick Boseman, too. Yep. He, could, he could care less what people thought about him. He went out on the golf course every day. He did interviews. He was on other people's show. He was living life yep. to the fullest. And so whatever you want to say and however you want to say it about O.J. Orenthal, Jay Simpson, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest running back athletes of all time. Maybe the best uh, at his peak. Right, at his peak. Come on, man. Um, the the man is gone, right? And so, you know, I I would love to send my condolences to his family and, and things like that. But come on, man. Like, you have so many people walking around here with their cape on and their judge <laughs> outfit. And they're judging things that he did in his life. Uh, and this man was found innocent, man. Let's let's. I don't believe he did it because this is OJ and OJ has always had a pattern of this. OJ have al always had a pattern of talking too much. Mm. Sure. Like yeah. he can't stop talking, right? Yeah. And we all know, we've all been around people who talk to talk a lot. Uh, they basically will tell you everything that they need that you need to know about them. Yeah. Mm. And if they did something, they'll tell on themselves. Yeah. And so he talked so much you would, you you would, would think yeah. that he would have told on himself. Yep. He didn't. So you are you are we here to think? Am I here to think that OJ was the greatest murderer of all time? What? And got away with of all time? Stop. Of Stop all time? it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, Paul, your thoughts. Come uh on. I think um Kind of, kind of what Dre's saying. He was found innocent, and but more, more my point of view on it is, uh, I try not to, uh, with you know, ex some exception, I try not to speak ill of the dead, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of whether he did it or not. He, he's, he's gone. There's no other kind of penance he could have. If he did do it, justice has taken its course. If he didn't, life has taken its course, and he lived his life to the fullest. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I also don't entirely get the obsession with it. Like how many court cases, like the only reason we keep coming back to this court case where a guy who- How old were you when the, the trial happened? Uh, you'd have to remind me. It was year. 96. That's the year I was born. 90, 95, 96. Yeah, so you're not going to understand why it keeps coming out. It, 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 well, was, it was American history. Like yeah. it was on TV everywhere. They're canceling everything. Um, you know, we were in school or, or just out of school, I think, at the time, and it was everywhere. I mean, it interrupted the sure. NBA Finals when when the you know Bronco chase first happened. So, it was it was be it was basically social media before social media. Right. Okay. Yeah. I I, I understand that. Um, but I think for me, like the only reason we still talk about it is because it is OJ though. Like, how many people who were acquitted of a murder oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that people think that they did? Do people harp on that person for thirty years? Only because it's OJ yeah. and he is who he is and he was who he was. Of course. And he was he was a personality and I'm sure he rubbed some people the wrong way and he vice versa. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, well, he wasn't black. He was OJ, right? He, that is what he said. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs>
uh, which I people got, you know, I have no grounds to speak on that, but you know, people have differing views on that. You, I understand what he's saying, or he's taking a stand in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I mean. People rub people the wrong way or not. Um, but I always find it difficult to like separate the man from his accomplishment or woman from their accomplishment, whether he did murder those people or not, whether he didn't, whatever you think of him as a person he was a phenomenal football player and that's why a lot yeah, of people know who he was going to the r kelly michael jackson the yeah. artist from you know whatever they were doing in their personal life or accused of doing in their personal life you know you, you have to be able to do that uh, because we don't know anyone else's yeah. life behind the scenes right so we're, we're fans of them as the artist as the athlete mm -hmm. and we need to be able to do that without being looked at weird because i'm still a fan of oj the football player i'm, I'm a oh, fan 100%. of oj in the naked gun uh movie series Trilogy, yeah. you know yeah i think the uh i think the difference or what pe some people don't identify with is just because you think somebody is a phenomenal actor or a phenomenal athlete or mm -hmm director or so on and so forth still human doesn't mean you think well it doesn't mean you think they're a phenomenal person it, yeah, yeah, that, exactly. that has, they could be a great person and make yep. a great be a great athlete or be a terrible person and be a great and athlete. just on the other spectrum of that there's great people that are bad you know we might not like them as athletes but yeah as a person they might be great people like yeah. trey what do you think sam punk yeah i mean i'm just, I'm, w I'm with you i'm with you on on everything that you said but at the same time uh people are human right and so yeah. sometimes when we have all of these athletes and we have people who are at a high stature uh in their field we hold them to a certain level yeah. right and so we have to remember that these people are still human yeah right and so human error do uh exist uh but the simple fact is he was convicted. I mean, he was uh, accused of a crime. They took him to court and he was found innocent. It, it should be done. Yeah. Right. He was accused uh, of another one and he went to and he went to and he went to jail. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so R. Kelly, if we're throwing R. Kelly in there, he was confused, confused. I mean, uh, con convicted, convicted of a crime that he was accused of. And now he's in jail. Right. Michael Jackson accused, went to went to uh, court, found innocent. Yep. Should be done. But right? we also know there's a lot of people in jail that we might even know in real life that you know we we can't just act like the judicial system in america is good either you know yeah. what i'm saying there's no, a lot of I'm politics not, involved in not saying that either but i mean there is a lot of innocent people uh in jail yeah. right and there's a there's lot there's still of, people in jail for marijuana and it's legal yeah. now right so uh and there's a lot of people who who've gotten off yeah. right uh we we uh, all natalie in the comments why does caitlin jenner's uh, comments even matter and why do they keep showing it I haven't seen it. I think you had pulled it up. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what was the comment? I, I, he I, said, well, she said, Caitlyn Jenner. He said, she said? He said, she said, good riddance. Oh. You, you know what that kind of reminds me of? It's, uh, I know the studio here, we have a little connection to hip hop and so on yeah. with, with Speak Life and everything. Um, it reminds me of a line in a J. Cole song where he's walking, he's rapping about how he's walking through the airport and they're talking about how Osama's been killed and he's like, these ladies are clapping and cheering like LeBron just hit a game-winning buzzer. Mm. And it's like, that's a person's life. Obviously, that's an extreme yeah. example, but that's a no, person's that's still, life regardless of... I mean, we look at even the, the war, yeah. the Israel and Palestine, and you know, you got people on one side, people on the other side. It's like, both sides, there's kids being killed. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't really cheer for either side, right? You can't cheer during war. Right. There's and, no winners. And, and you see that, like, like death is death. Death is final. Um, and to cheer for that, to make those kind of comments. Uh, and Caitlyn wouldn't do that if it was one of her, you know, children or stepchildren right. that, that, that died. Um, people did that when Kobe passed away because he got accused yeah. and acquitted from uh, Colorado. And, and there was some people that did that right when Kobe died, too. Um it's in bad taste. And my thing is things you speak out, like you, you things come back to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Words, so words, know, words are spells. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we live in uh, today's society where, um, you know, people are judging people uh, from their own uh, seat. Yeah. Yeah. So Throwing, whatever, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, whether he did it or not, there's going to be a higher judge that is going to, uh, you know, have that conversation sure. with yeah. him uh, when the day comes. Right? And guess who who that judge will be? 
The same judge is going to have to judge all of us for our Pretty actions. Pretty much. Pretty Known much. and unknown. Pretty so much. You got to be careful. Um, listen, man, if you guys are watching live, please share the live video stream. If you're watching on Facebook, please move over to the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash at Gorilla Cross Sports. Subscribe to the channel. Um, soon, I mean, I I don't know. We're not going to be streaming on Facebook too long because they, they just take stuff down all the time. They yeah. hit us with uh, copyright issues and stuff like that things that uh youtube just doesn't do so please do that for us help us grow the channel more uh and, and all that if you're watching please comment in the uh youtube comments as well let us know where you're watching from and if you have any opinions on things we're talking about let us know and we will uh put your comment on the screen as well uh tamika uh very th- so I-, I don't even know tamika in real life but she's on Let the Ball Bounce all the time. She's on Unnamed Sports Show all the time. Number one fan. Uh, people like that that, uh, you know, you might not, you know her in real life, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. there's some people that that support you more that you don't even really yeah. know. And then some of your, you know, and, and we talked about this the other day on, on Speak Life. Um, people you know won't support you as much as people that maybe don't know you that are coming across your YouTube channel and stuff like that. So... I, I got frustrated with trying to get people to watch my stuff that I knew. And I realized when yeah. you just do it organically, there's people that are just going to be a fan Gravitate of your show. Like you yeah. got, you know, into the West, you guys got people that watch all the time. Oh, yeah. It's... That are, you know, and, and, and as I said, they're my family's in the comments, yeah. but uh, my family watches. Yeah. Well, and I have friends that watch. I'm just saying, like, I have a lot of friends. A lot of times they don't support. Yeah. They don't come in and just like comment real quick. You don't have to stay on the whole time. Like, especially if you're not into sports or whatever. Yeah. But um, you know, just just listen, there's little things you could do on social media to help the algorithm for what people are doing creatively. Cause it's a lot of time to put into yeah. these podcasts that we do on Into the West, unnamed, let the ball bounce. So Yeah, I I a hundred percent agree. You um, know, there there's always gonna be uh more people that you don't know support you than people that, that do, right? And so uh, you, you won't know until you open up your own business, right? Let's just say you opened up a restaurant. Everybody that knows you that that knows that you have a restaurant is not going to come support your restaurant. They're going to go right past your That's restaurant to McDonald's analogy. and get yep. a number two super size, <laughs> right? And so, uh, I, me as a, uh, a a content creator, a, yep. a sports talk uh, analyst, uh, you know, owner of a sports talk show yep. in the business, uh, there there's just people that I meet every day that I don't know, right? people that i tell watch my show that i know that don't they my yeah. friends are the same ones yeah. that ask me when is your show yeah. what time does it come on right so at the end of the day youtube is a great platform for people who don't know you yep. to actually find you and so yeah, yeah paul yeah. has a supporter in the comments yeah that's my buddy Murad. he's been my best friend since we were in sixth fifth sixth grade he's okay. always been he's one of those people that i can count on in that way and then my um, brother's in the comments, and my oh. mom's in the comments, too. She uh, had something on OJ. I was a huge fan of OJ as a football player. When the tragedy happens, I didn't want to believe it until I did. We lived this solid trial and came to our own conclusions, which is fine. I mean, yeah. that's part of it, too, right? Like, there's only a, a handful of people in the in the in uh, as a jury, and then everyone else is a jury, too, right? Like, we, it, we're a jury all opinion, the time. Yeah. Exactly. So that happens. But, uh Yeah. yeah. And sometimes court of public opinion is is worse than actually, oh, you know, yeah. anything. It does yeah. get like that a lot. Yeah. Like sometimes you get people who, who do things and right before they even go to court, people have already, uh, you know, have their judgment on whether they're guilty. or They put or you innocent. on the cross before you even get a chance to hear Most your side of the story. Yeah. 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 I wonder who they did that to before. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Kanye made a song about him. He yeah. did. Yeah. It's a good song. Yeah. I like that song. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to, uh, I tried to uh, short like little tangent. I tried to use that as my uh, walkout song for yeah. uh, my first kickboxing match, and they wouldn't let me do so it. You thought you were Jesus, and they didn't. I just thought it was dope, but they like, <laughs> but they didn't ask Wait, me. Did you come in a white robe? Nah, you know it wasn't that actually, deep. actually, if you had a white robe on, you kind of looked like look the, like you look uh, like white Jesus. Well, it looked like the pictures they portray. Yeah, you know sure. The guy from the Middle East who's completely bit. white. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but um, but not. Nah, and they didn't ask me. They, they didn't like tell me. <laughs> they didn't say, hey, we can't, like, you can't use Jesus Walks. They just used a different Kanye song without saying anything to me. Yeah. And I was mad confused. And uh, D1, who was here last week, he was my coach. Yeah. And he was like, uh, he was like, this is why I bring headphones, because 
even in like the bigger promotions sometimes they just won't use the song you asked for so you just want to get in your mm. get in your zone without that but anyways I, that's funny you want to hear <laughs> you want to hear a fun fact uh yeah i mean <laughs> I, don't, I don't know fun fact man uh i went to uh catholic school here at saint christopher's over off of uh bruce and um, I was an altar boy. Okay. And uh, they made me play. Did G- you? They made me play. G- no. They made me play Jesus in in the actual play. Really? Uh, so they, they so let to, a black Jesus. Yeah. In a Catholic I, yeah. I had to carry wow. a real wooden cross uh, through the entire church wow. in, in a play. So. Yeah. That's dope. Story. That's Fun pretty fact. dope. Yeah. So, yeah. Fun like, fact. Fun fact. Wow. All right. Learning so much today. <laughs> yeah, I know. On today's show. Um. All right. Uh, we're gonna get into the topics today. We're going to start with the WNBA and women's basketball, and then we're going to get into just the Final Four and everything that happened and kind of recap that because we haven't been on since uh, because we didn't do a show Monday because the uh, men's Final Four was happening. Uh, (laughs) Josh Groban lookalike. You get that one? (laughs) No, I don't think I've ever gotten Josh Groban. We got got Baker Mayfield a lot. I I get Baker Mayfield a lot from the gentleman sitting to your left and my right. Interesting. Um, But when I put the picture side by side, everybody thought the same thing. I don't know about with the haircut I have right now. now. Not now. Not now, now, but when I had the shorter hair. Um, I get uh, John Bernthal, the dude who plays Punisher. Okay. uh, Interesting. Really? I get uh, a... Who is it? It's like... Not Hugh Jackman, but uh, Ben Affleck. I get Ben Affleck. That's interesting. Just, maybe, I don't think I look Maybe any, in the eyes. Maybe, but I, can see it. I don't. This girl who works at the uh, the uh, corner store right next to my house, the gas station, every time I come in, she's like, what up, Ben? And I'm like, she know, like. Nice. That's funny. Yeah. Well, let me know uh, if you're the real Ben, because I want to come visit. Yeah, uh, it's uh, money, man. To, well, you know, J-Lo. I mean, he's supposed to be like five, uh, six foot four. Uh, I am definitely not that. Yeah. Uh. Paul uh, has a girlfriend. If you watch into the West Comics, oh, you would man. know that. But that's I've, a, that's I've, a I've got Lennox Lewis, and I've actually signed a I signature. Can, you know, uh, I can see that more than me, Ben Affleck. <laughs> that's so funny, bro. <laughs> I've actually was uh, on the west side of town here, and I went to an AM, PM, and somebody said, oh, my God, it's Lennox Lewis. And he got his camera, he took a picture, and he asked me for an autograph, and I signed my name, not Lennox Lewis, but <laughs> yeah, I did yeah. sign my name. He didn't know. Uh, you, my brother said he gets Tony Hawk. I, I could see that. I could 100% see, see I saw that before you put it up. I could 100% see your brother is Tony that, Hawk. But he but could yeah. play Tony Hawk in like a biopic. That's funny. Huh. <laughs> Tony Hawk's pretty tall too, though, isn't he? I think he's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I think. I Maybe d- not. I'm not, a, I'm not aware. The only reason I know how tall Ben Affleck is is because I, people tell me I look like him all the time. I'm like, how tall is he? Uh-oh. Am I am I right there? No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, let's jump. Uh, hopefully, we, we have. Uh, I was just looking at people's heights. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> Melissa's watching. If not, we'll send the clip because she says we never talk about women's college basketball, but uh, mm. it's not girl chat sport, it's men chat sport. But Caitlin Clark, two things. Is she getting too much coverage? And then is she going to bring more excitement to the D- WNBA this year? Like, I've been excited ever since we got the Aces here, especially when we've been winning championships. We, we went back to back. So this year, trying for the three P, like I'm, I'm already zoned in. So Caitlin sure. Clark isn't doing anything extra for me except maybe watching some Fever games because I watched a couple last year. Yeah, but I'd never tuned in to watch a Fever game if they weren't playing the Aces or playing a, another team I liked. Uh, they had drafted Aaliyah Boston, so uh, so she's you know she's a really good player. And now with having the first pick in the WNBA draft, they are going to draft Caitlin Clark. There's no doubt about it. Um, but what do you guys think? First of all, with the coverage of Caitlin Clark, is that is it too much or is it just you know the way the media runs? I I think that it's uh, it's well deserved, not just for Caitlin, but for the sport of women's basketball. I think they finally have their kind of what do you want to call it? Steph Curry, Michael Jordan. This is like their Magic Johnson, Larry Bird era of WNBA, I would say. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if it's been about the same amount of time the WNBA has existed as the NBA had before Magic and Bird came along and kind of saved the league from the, uh, from the financial issues they, yeah. it was having. Um, and I think Caitlin Clark, she brought a bunch of attention to college basketball, and she rightfully so. She's incredible. But the other thing, a byproduct of that, which I think is the best thing about it, it brought coverage to Paige Buchers, coverage to Juju Watkins, who is probably going to break every record Caitlin Clark set. She's a freshman. And see, that's what I want to see. I want to see, did it really? Because it did this year, right? Yeah. But is that going to carry over to next year? Which I hope it does, yeah. because Juju's amazing. She's Paige, Paige Beckers has already been amazing. Like, I, you know, we've been watching her for a few years, and then she's 
been hurt so she's been at uconn for mm -hmm. a while already um but i mean some of us have known women's college basketball for a long time i probably did watch more of it this year than, than ever yeah i've never watched the women's tournament from start to finish the way i did this year i've always watched the final four and stuff like that um so i want to see the carryover did this really because i keep hearing that from you know some of the bigger networks did this really help propel women's college basketball for the future as well or was it just for this year i think it was just for this year mm -hmm. uh, honestly um it's caitlin's last year um and i'm just gonna be honest in my opinion um if she was a um a, a black athlete sure. breaking all these records i don't think that we have the amount of viewership that we do i think we have a lot but i don't think we have as much as Caitlyn did uh, for her being a white woman. But I still think we would have a lot. I think for... But, but you are right. I, mean, I, I think I, that helps. I, I think for her being a white woman, white America wanted to see her sure. win. Yeah. Like, seriously. There's a lot of underlying racism. People may tell you that it doesn't exist. It still exists, right? It's very much in our face. Uh, and I think it's been on both sides of it with yeah. this too, though. White America wanted Caitlyn to win. They wanted to see her go up against the big black, bad, uh, you know, guys from South Carolina or, um, you know, LSU. LSU yeah, they yeah, wanted sure. to see that. They wanted to see it. Next year, Juju, Juju's a black girl in US, USC. They're sure. not gonna, you're not gonna get white America wanting to see Juju. They're all going to turn their attention to now the WNBA, where the Indiana Fever yeah. has the first pick of the WNBA draft, yeah. and they want to see Caitlin do well. That's what. That's where it's going to shift. Sure. And so, um, well, you don't think this helps out women's basketball all in general because they're always. I think it, they, they they keep asking for something, right? And I think with this, even her going into the WNBA, uh, and if she does have a great rookie uh, season, this is going to help with sponsorship, with what the women need to be able to get the money and and the that's what I was the, 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 the things they need on that end that they've been yelling at, yelling about for a while. Uh, equal pay or not, you know, not equal pay, but equal, equal revenue, share. yeah, e yeah, yeah. E equal revenue share with that so i think overall it is going to help uh and i think the fact that there are uh juju has also an issue with being on the west coast west coast basketball in college never gets the same uh eyes as it should well especially as like the midwest but right. i think what, what she's going to be doing like we've talked about her a million times like she doesn't even know the game of basketball yet that well and she's going to learn a lot this summer i think she's going to be amazing i think you're gonna have to watch what she's doing because she is gonna break a lot of these Caitlin Clark right. records. Well so I think it's gonna bring all that right back up. And but. and and that's a good point. You say a lot of people uh don't watch uh West Coast uh, basketball when it comes to USC and things like that. because um, we've dealt with that even in men's yeah, basketball. Like West Coast has always been a little always like, right know. but at the end of the day who's watching a lot of Iowa basketball, right? Let's just be honest, right? Yeah. And so when Caitlin you know, went to Iowa and she just started to become the amazing player that she is because you can't take that away from her. People who no. played any sports, and even if you haven't played any sports at all, the girl has game. You cannot take away her athletic ability yeah. at all to play the game of basketball, right? Yeah. Will it translate to the WNBA? I believe that, you know, she'll still be able to be a star, but will she be the star like she was a all of Definitely college not basketball. this year. It's going to take four or five years yeah. to become that. I Be think she will, but it's going to take a while. She's going to come. She's going to come in this season. Which, what I like about WNBA season, it starts right after the college basketball season. Yeah. Like they, they start in May, uh, so we're going to be able to see this right away. And that's something we don't get with the men or an NFL. Like you have to wait months and months and months it's the to see how this up, is going to yeah. translate. Uh, but I think she's going to struggle a little bit because listen, man. First of all, these women in the WMA, they've been there for a while. They're, they're a lot bigger than all the college basketball women. They're a lot women. stronger. They're a lot more veterans. And guess what? They see all the publicity, so they want to put this girl in her place. And yeah. not saying it's her fault. Listen, this is not Caitlin Clark's fault that, that she's getting blown up by no. the media. No. she like, like you said, she's a great player. She has the skills. Um, but... I think what we want to see as fans of sports start blowing up other people like that too, because there are other amazing female but basketball who, players. Yeah, but who's in charge of the media, right? And so uh, the media has the ability to make or break 
a person's career, right? Yeah. Let's just be honest. Uh, they put all the attention on Caitlyn, and that's where all the attention was. Where yeah. was all this attention with Maya Moore or sure. Candace Parker yeah. or Shamika Holslaw or Tina Thompson or or even Sue Bird yeah. at, at, at that point? But see, but back in those days, you didn't have a lot of media. Uh, they were clamming. covering women's basketball either. Yeah. Because right? I, I know Candace Parker did. Like, she was... In college, she was when, a she, dog. when she first went to college, though, I remember her being called the next great uh, w- woman's basketball player before she even touched the floor. So, but did she get this type of media coverage? But she was not in the social media era either. And, exactly. and social media helps give the coverage. So what That's media true. does now is they jump on who is hot in social media. Yeah. Who does every who's everyone talking about? And they'll help push that, too. Yeah. So it kind of works together. Sometimes in social media, we're talking about who the media is talking about and then sometimes the media is talking about who we're talking about in social media right. so and it, and this is the same media who told everybody you know to stay at home right yeah don't leave wear your house mask. wear a mask yeah. and if you don't get the vaccine then you're gonna die right yeah. it's the same yeah. media yeah. that did that and guess what there were millions of americans that did exactly what the media told them to do yeah. Right. So I'm a little leery when it comes to the media sure. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. I got to see it for myself. Uh, but like I said, back to Caitlin, uh, I think she's going to do great in the WNBA. But I don't think she's going to have a the the college career accolades that she had in college. I don't think she's going to hard. I don't be, think uh, she's going to do that in the WNBA, because when she goes to the, uh, the Indiana Fever uh, team and. By the way, my my favorite Indiana Fever player of all time is Tamika Catchings, right? Okay. That, that, that's, yeah. that's my girl, right? Yeah. And so uh, that tells you a little bit now about how I used to and still do watch a lot of mm-hmm. WNBA or college, women's college basketball. Uh, but I don't think that her all of her college accolades are going to transfer to the WNBA because she's not going to be the only person on the WNBA player. I mean, the WNBA team that's yeah. good. Yeah. She's going to have three, four, five, Iowa. maybe six other girls yeah. on that team that are really good. Yeah, comment in the chat. I think she became popular because it is similar to Steph Curry in his college career. Uh, will she now become the Steph of the WNBA that propelled her to the top of the league? It's very possible because people, once Steph came in, uh, f- from college, from that great tournament run that he had at Davidson, most people were saying oh, he's not going to be the it's same. Not in the NBA. I mean, yeah. and that's why he was drafted behind uh, the dude from Syracuse who hasn't been in the league for a long time. Uh, the dude uh, that got Knicks drafted, drafted some, you Timberwolves, know, Timberwolves. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, Timberwolves. Uh, there was a lot of people that could have drafted Steph Curry. I think Steph was Flynn. eight or nine. Yes. Right? Yeah, Johnny yes, Flynn. Johnny Flynn. Yes. Uh, who who lasted five years in the NBA, and I liked him a lot in college, but. Uh, yeah, I mean she she could. I, I think she I, I definitely think she could because uh the WNBA is more of a shooting league that uh than the NBA too. Well, yeah. You know, definitely. um her Sabrina uh, Iescu, uh the same type of uh player. Um but even that Sabrina, you know, she was coming in and and she's very good in the WNBA, she but was there's the players on her too. team yeah. that are better. Yeah, yeah, and and she was getting compared. They got Brianna Stewart over there. They yeah. got they got ballers over That's there. That's what you know? I'm saying. Each WNBA team have uh, multiple players that have come from the college rank that were really good on their team. Like when Sabrina came in, she even had Kobe's endorsement, right? And so yeah. when when Sabrina came in, people were looking at her like she's going to be the next female Kobe Bryant uh, in the WNBA. And so, um, and we I'm, could still give a lot of credit to Kobe for helping endorse uh, women's oh, yeah, basketball. Most so I, I think that's even helped with Caitlin Clark without people really understanding yeah. that. Yeah. Well, especially with all the uh, legwork he did with him and his daughter's teams and just putting together tournaments and stuff. Yeah. I remember when I uh, I used to work at a restaurant with with when I how I met Frank and uh, he would come in with his daughters for like volleyball tournaments or basketball tournaments yeah. in the town and they would have their dinner there and that's just an example of him putting stuff together for girls sports and basketball that went a really long way for them. Right. Now on, on the Caitlin Clark thing, uh, I think um, what you were talking about with the white media and stuff, I think that's absolutely a real thing. Mm-hmm. I think Sabrina uh, UNESCO and the uh, Steph Curry three point shootout is great and well-deserved, but is also an example of that. Um, but I think, I hope 
that the uh, fallout from it, because sometimes the fallout from it, well, this is mostly a great thing, but the fallout from maybe not the most well-intentioned thing can be really good. I think, I know that I was never a big college, women's college basketball watcher. I used to watch when uh, Gino Ariema and UConn mm -hmm. were going undefeated every year. I don't know if I could name for you more than one or two players on those teams. I would watch those games to see if they were going to go yeah. undefeated again. And before that, I think the last time I really watched college basketball or women's. women's basketball in general was when I was a little kid and Lisa Leslie was on the LA Sparks mm. and I was like oh she's the female Shaq like yeah. I love her I'm gonna watch this and that's why like I became a Lakers fan because of Shaq and because of Lisa Leslie yeah um but I think that Caitlin Clark's name becoming giant and playing against people like Juju and Paige I think that hopefully I know I'm gonna watch more USC next year I can only speak for myself I'm gonna watch Definitely. the women's yeah. tournament more next year and keep an eye on Juju and Paige and people like that because I'm invested now. Because Juju could be something that we've never seen in women's yeah. basketball, too. She could I, be. I, she really can be. She, she, has, she has a crazy skill set. Yeah. But as we talk about the media, like we're talking about her before we talk about South Carolina's undefeated season. Yeah. Be, you know, beating Caitlin Clark and having to make a comeback. They were down by 10 in the first half, in the first quarter to start the game. In South Carolina, going back to the UConn teams that were undefeated all the time, they should have won last year. They got upset in the tournament, could have, would have, should have, uh, got upset. And so this was their year to to come back and wipe out everybody to get that to get that win, man. And they did it. And Don Staley, who a lot of people don't know, was a great basketball player. Virginia. And and she took that team, and she's my favorite coach to watch. I love her. Uh, LSU's coach gets on my nerves, but Don Staley, she has respect for for, for the game in general. Yeah, well, uh, what she and, said about what, Caitlin. Yeah, even. what she said about Caitlin, and just what she's done at South Carolina. South Carolina's been dominating. I, I think that is what's being lost in translation yeah. right now. Right, we're talking so much about Caitlin bringing all of the notoriety and all of the media to women's basketball and women's sports. Let's not forget Don Staley. The fact that she went over to South Carolina and she turned that program completely around. Yeah. They are dominant. They are dominant every single year. That's they where Asia Wilson came from for yeah, you, uh, L went, LA, uh, Las Vegas Aces fans. The fan. Aces. They went undefeated this year and they went up against Caitlin Clark and they beat them, mm -hmm. hands down. Don Staley is the best college basketball coach right now. Mm -hmm. And she was last year and she was the year before that. And I think just what she has going on over in South Carolina with that program, she has me wanting to continue. Yeah. Because it didn't just it didn't just start this year. Continue to watch what's going on sure. in women's basketball because of Don Staley. Not because only because of Caitlin Clark. Don Staley has that program just unbelievable. Yeah. She has her freshmen playing like seniors. She has her seniors yeah. playing like WNBA players. And she has that program in South Carolina just outstanding. And so uh, big ups and kudos to Don Staley, who gets lost in translation uh, yeah. when it comes to bringing notoriety to uh, sports uh, when it comes to the women's game and I basketball. Think, I think that's the hope, right? Like, if you do come to, because of Caitlin Clark, whether that is the is the penul penultimate of the sport or not, if that gets people in, hopefully they come for uh, Caitlin Clark and they stay for Don Staley in, the so in South Carolina and they stay for Juju Watkins and they stay for Paige and all the other things going on. So hopefully it sticks. Yeah. I know for me, I'll watch next year, and I'm hoping that's the same yeah. for everybody else. But but who knows? Yeah, she's just gonna have a dominating program, kind of like how Pat Summit, uh, God rest her Tennessee, soul, yeah. uh, half of Tennessee. Pat Summit was just amazing, mm -hmm. and I loved watching how Pat Summit had her girls over in Tennessee coming through that program and. During that run, Pat yeah. Summit was it. And she gets lost in translation when people forgetting about the women's game. Well, she falls in behind, unfortunately, Gino. Yeah. Because of the big yeah. like blow up with them and the game between Tennessee and UConn. Yeah. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of people know who Gino Ariema is, but not not Pat Summit. Yeah. And Kim over at uh, yeah, LSU. Okay, I know yeah. you say you don't like Kim, but <laughs> you know, she is uh she's really fiery. Yeah. She is a player's coach. Uh, and she definitely uh, is a staple and a Hall of Famer when it comes to uh, women's college basketball. Yeah. So.
All right, uh, if you're watching live on Facebook, please move over to the YouTube channel. I see Chris went over there leaving comments. So uh, come over to the uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Gorilla Cross Sports and subscribe, turn on your notifications over there uh, so you know when we're live. Uh, and Chris is in, back in the building. Uh, he's here with us. Uh, Chris, we need to get you in the studio sometime, man. I know your schedule is crazy, uh, you know, being famous and everything at all these events in Vegas. But, uh, yeah, we need to get you in here sometime. Um, all right, moving on to the NBA. I'm excited to talk about this. It's mm -hmm. time for the NBA playoff push. There's about three days left in the NBA regular season. And then we move on to the NBA play-in tournament, which I remember the first year no one wanted it to happen. And I feel like every year after that, it's just it's gotten better. It's I think yeah. it's amazing. Uh, it's almost like college basketball, and it's coming right after college basketball, where it's almost one and done. You kind of get a chance to win again if you you know if you're a, one of the higher seeds in, in the play-in. But it looks like Lakers and Warriors might play each other in the play-in again. They did that a couple years ago. Uh -huh. uh, we have Kings and Pelicans uh, in the Kings uh, and East. Suns. Right uh, Kings and Suns. Okay. Yeah. I know they, and that's the thing. There's been a lot of flip flopping. Suns have been just looking really bad, losing some horrible games. Um, but what do you guys think about this play in and in, in the Eastern Conference? Who is it? It's uh, Fe uh Miami and uh, Philadelphia, and then, and then Atlanta, uh, and Chicago. Atlanta and Chicago. Yeah, man, Dre, I'm gonna let you start with this because this is I, listen. It we had to start the show back up before the playoffs because I love the NBA. So there's going to be, we're going to be, we might have to start going live right after the NBA playoff yeah. games to recap everything that happened each night. But Dre, what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, where do you want to start on the East or the West? Let's start on the East. Um, dude, I think, uh, whoever, okay. So you've got the Chicago against Atlanta, Atlanta. game. Um, I'm definitely gonna go with Atlanta. And the, are these are these like locked in yet, like officially, or is uh, there still some movement? That the could Lakers, uh, the Lakers could move up to. Uh, I think in best case scenario, they could Eighth. get up to the to the seventh. seventh if like every other team loses out and they get up to the uh, seventh. But I think realistically, they'll be the eighth or the ninth. They need to beat the Pelicans in the last game of the season, and they need the Kings Which I to think lose. They, will. they need the Kings to lose more than one game. Because here's the problem with the uh, with that side of it. I know yeah. we're talking about the East. So no, seven, you're, eight, no, you're seven, eight play each other, then nine and ten play each other, right? And then the winner of nine, ten plays the loser plays of loser seven, eight. Seven, eight. Yeah. Um, but okay. the problem for the Lakers specifically is interesting. They have the tiebreaker over the Suns, yep. and they don't have the tiebreaker over the Kings. And in a three-way tie, yep. because of the nature of it, mm. the Lakers finish in last, even though they have the tiebreaker over the Suns. Um, but they're so the... West for sure. There's a bunch of a bunch of little things that could still change. I think the Warriors, unless they win out and the Lakers well, let's go lose back out, up to the East. they could switch. But yeah, I think the East is locked in. Yep. Um, it's gonna be Miami and, uh, and Philly, Philly, and then it's gonna be Atlanta and Chicago. I think that Miami uh, Philly game is going to go. Uh, it could go six or seven. Um, that's a very interesting matchup. I wouldn't want to play the Miami Heat in the first round. Uh, but Joel Embiid has come back from his injury, and that Philly team looks pretty good. That's man. why I like Philly. And so I like Philly beating uh, Miami in six or seven uh, in that series. Well, no, this is just going to be play. Yeah. I mean, play. the play-in, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely taking Philly. Um Yeah, I, I, I got to. So then Chicago it. plays Atlanta. Yeah. And then and, I, I'm going Atlanta. And then Atlanta would play Miami. Yep. Yes, Atlanta yep. would play Miami. And then Miami would win yeah. against Atlanta. And Miami last year, for those of you, you that don't remember, they were in the play-in last year and went to yep. the NBA Finals. Lakers were in the play-in last year and went to the uh, Western Conference Western Finals. Conference. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that could still happen. Like, you know, these, these teams at the bottom aren't bad anymore. No. Yeah. And it's that's, not like back in the day when the eight played the one and you knew that was just a, a cakewalk series. And it was series. a five-game series, and It was too. a five-game series until Lakers started doing bad. They had to move it to seven. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot could happen. I mean, it, there's no weak teams anymore in the playoffs. No. So uh, I know that Clippers moving to the West. Clippers and um, Mavs. And Mavs are already set yes. to play a, be a playoff matchup. I got Mavs in seven. I got Mavs in seven. 
I think that is going seven games. Because right now. Listen, man, if Clippers God. lose in the first round with the players they Bro, have, though, what's going to happen? Kyrie and Luka right are now cooking. are cooking. They are playing probably the best one and two basketball in yeah. the league right now. And around this time last year, and it I'm didn't so even look like they did Kyrie, like each other. I'm, I'm so glad he stayed there, though, because people were complaining last year. Yeah. Kyrie was there for a month and a half before the season ended. Yeah. You know on, what I'm man. saying? So for people that just want things to instantly happen like it's NBA 2K, you just can't do that in sports. Like, you need some type of chemistry. We saw the Miami Heat take a full year to lose in the NBA Finals to have to get that momentum when they had Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and LeBron James and and to get that chemistry. You need a while to get chemistry on teams. Well, and the same could be said at the beginning of the season for the Clippers. They looked really bad when they first came together with Harden and Westbrook. And I think these teams, both of those teams, the Mavs and the Clippers, have a similar kind of trajectory. Yep. They started really rocky and started coming together. Um, I think the series depends entirely on the play of Russell Westbrook and James Harden. If mm-hmm. Russell Westbrook and James Harden play well in most of the games, I don't see how the Mavs can beat them. But James Harden and Westbrook are notorious for struggling in yeah. very big games. Not calling them chokers or anything, but they do at times struggle in those games. Game seven of Houston versus Golden State, um, the year before, or the year when Harden was in uh, Philly, and then Westbrook just had to do it all by himself yeah. for a while. I think if those two play well with the second unit, especially Westbrook, I think it'll be really hard to beat the Clippers for anybody. But I think if the Mavs and Kyrie are able to do what they're doing now and the Clippers and PG too, that the team is so volatile. Sometimes they look like the best yeah. team I've ever seen. Sometimes they look and like, they look how horrible. are they over 500? And that's why I think they're so up and down. And I think the biggest problem, and I think what's going to determine is health. Are Clippers going to be healthy? Because they've been, they've still had people in that, out of the lineup. PG Kawhi. just got healthy. Yeah, yeah but well, is he going to stay again. healthy? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, like, are they going into it healthy? No, but that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He gets, yeah, he they just get banged up all the time, yeah. Uh, Kawhi, we, we, we've talked about it on the show many times. He he got hurt or didn't want to play one game, went all the way home uh, before halftime. And, and so we just don't know what the Clippers are going to do. And I think the chemistry that Luka and Kyrie are building right now, two Phenomenal. of my favorite players in the league, oh, I think it's amazing. And I think two players could overcome four because – there's only chemistry you need to build between two players and then you sure. have your role players. When you have four stars, four people that have, have uh, been in the MVP race or have won MVPs, there's a lot more chemistry to be built. And it's you still don't know who gets the ball last, right? Yeah. Out of four players. In Dallas, you have two players you kind of have to worry about. But I think they've kind of like it's Luka, whoever's of open. Yeah. You know, because Kyrie had a game-winning shot where, where the ball went to him. The play was called well, for him. Well, you know what really unlocked the Mavs? Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington. Yeah, they have. They, they unlocked yeah. that team. They um, gave took a bunch of little things off of Luka and Kyrie's plate. And now those two were able to play more freely while P.J. and uh, Gafford were getting getting down in the dirty work and not having to have Luka do yeah. things like that yeah. and Kyrie do things like that. Like Gafford was an incredible trade at the deadline. I'm glad you said it because I was about to. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the P.J. Washington and Gafford trade uh, at the end of the season will be looked at as probably one of the best trades that the Mavs uh, have, have made over the past couple of years. P.J. Washington coming from the Hornets, this was a great situation for yeah. him. And he's actually playing better yeah. with oh, yeah. the Mavs than he did over with the Hornets. And, and so, I think Mavs need a low-key trade because I think Cuban's always trying to go for these home run hits yeah. instead of building a good team like P.J. Yeah, P.J. and, and Gafford, I think, are, um, are huge. Uh, and the way that they fit in jail with what Luka and uh, Kyrie got going on right now is just, you know, it's 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 amazing. There's yeah. some really good basketball being played. I, know, I remember a lot of people saying that when Luka gets the ball, he's a black hole, he's holding the ball, blah, blah, blah. But he's kind of bought into what uh, Jason Kidd and those uh, coaches have, uh, you know, wanted these guys to yeah. do. And I think, Well, he's never had a Kyrie right. on his team either, you know what I'm and, saying? Once you get Kyrie, I think you understand, and, like, the dynamic you need to have with a player like that. Yeah, and his body language. His body language is actually showing Kyrie that, hey, man, I like playing with you. I mean, mm-hmm. I just seen a play the other day where he came off the bench to help Kyrie off hmm. of the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, last year, you wouldn't have seen Luka do that. Yeah. Well, and the, I think part of what uh, 
took so long for Kyrie and Luka to gel is you look at uh, Kristaps, who is gelling amazingly with the Celtics. And Kristaps had an interview where he said he admitted he kind of screwed Luka over. He was like, he mm. was upset when he was in Dallas because he didn't want to take the back seat. They would set him up to play out of the corner, and he said it. Porzingis didn't want to take the back seat to Luka? No. He, oh, he, wow. I don't I don't know. remember what it was on, but he's in an yeah. interview with like Bill Simmons or something. I don't know. It's not Bill Simmons, but he t- talks about how he was like, I was childish. He was like, I didn't want to relinquish the, uh, the role I thought I deserved, even though now, obviously, I should have, and now I have an opportunity to make up for that with uh, Boston, but going back to Mavericks, yeah. Luca. last time he played with a star, he played with a disgruntled, annoyed, combative, not uh, no chemistry star. So that's probably another reason why it took Kyrie and Luca such a long time for Luca to trust Kyrie because he couldn't, he couldn't trust Porzingis. So he had that bad taste in his mouth. And now they finally have figured it, figured it out with Kyrie and what they're doing there and all the pieces they've unlocked. And Jason Kidd's done a phenomenal job. I think right now this is probably the healthiest I've ever seen Kyrie um, from uh, beginning of a season all the way to the yeah. end of the season. And he's looking like he's in the greatest shape of his life. Uh, he's out there doing things that I ain't seen Kyrie do yeah. uh, ever. Like, ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Dunking. Dunking two-handed, <laughs> getting lobs thrown to him. Uh Game-winning shots with the left hand past the free throw line. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. During Ramadan season where he just didn't eat anything. Yeah. All he did was breathe air. And so it, it's it's just really sad to see that this is the guy that they tried to destroy his character a yeah. couple of years ago over something that he told people to just go and watch. Go and yeah. watch. Right? And so now all of a sudden, no one's bringing that up. No one's talking about it. And now Kyrie uh, is taking back his career in his own hands just by continuing to be yeah, who he is dude. and he shout stopped. out to him for getting out of new york and yeah. actually getting into a place like yeah. dallas where they're not they don't care about yeah. that stuff near as much and 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 re-signing with them and and getting stability uh back in his career and back in his own hands yeah um i want to move on to the phoenix suns because they have a roster that everyone thought when they got katie last year oh there it goes they're gonna they're gonna win and then they lose chris paul this year they bring in bradley bill who himself is hurt all the time, and, and this year as well, hurt. Like, I don't even know when he's playing. When Phoenix comes on, I'm not sure if he's in the lineup or not. Day, he's been, he's day been after playing day. mostly up until the end of the season, but even still, yeah. Well, no, I mean, he missed a lot of this season. He, he missed the first, like, 15 games. No, I'm saying, like, the last, like, 5 to 10 games, yeah. I think he's been okay, but you never know. But you, you just don't know. The other day, they were down 35 to 4. I saw the <laughs> score pass my screen, and I, I thought it was a glitch. 35 to 4 to the Clippers in the first half. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a team that that is trying to get a playoff position. Yeah, they're still in the plan. And now they're in the plan, but they had a position like, like they were they Six. were fifth and sixth like for a long time. Yeah. And now they've fallen out to to now where they're in the play in. Um and I mean, let's talk about the play in in the West because this is it's just looking really crazy the fact in the play-in, we have Sacramento Kings who looked like they were going to be the team last year yeah. that, okay, they just need experience. Now next year, watch what they do. Uh, they've lost Malik Monk, which is yes, huge. Yes, that's, that's the um, thing. But they've fallen down into the play-in. So them and Phoenix look like they might be playing each other if the season ended today. If it's if it holds. Um, Phoenix is half a game behind New Orleans, who's number six right now. But potentially, we could have Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James, all in the plane. That's crazy. You know, I I see um, New Orleans uh, kind of dropping a little bit. I mean, they're they're without Bi. He's been hurt mm-hmm. uh, the past month and a half. Another guy that can't stay healthy. Right, he can't stay healthy at all. And um, I I just don't think that they have enough to sustain towards the end of the season. So I do see the Lakers or Phoenix kind of creeping up, but we'll see. Uh, how 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 Phoenix does? Uh, it, Phoenix is a wild card to me. Um, yeah. They have a bunch of guys that they kind of just threw. They signed uh, Isaiah Thomas for the rest of the season, yep. nice. um, which was you know a testament of of, of him just continuing to want to work on his game to get back into the NBA. But at the same time, you don't know who's going to actually show up to the game, whether it be Bill, uh, Durant, uh, or Brooke. or Brook, uh, because all of them have been hurt during the season. Yeah. Uh, and they're just like taking turns playing, taking turns being off. 
And so I don't know if they're going to have all of the chemistry moving forward. Um, it's, it's just going to be real interesting to see how Phoenix kind of And that's the it. problem. There's teams that can do that, right? Like, I think Lakers can do that now. Uh, AD and LeBron can go back and forth missing games. And they'll be uh, right. You could even see that in Golden State. Yep. Like, they, they can go back and forth miss some games. Um, but Phoenix hasn't developed that chemistry to be able to do that and then now get to the playoffs and turn that on. I just don't see it happening. Um, and I think, I mean, listen, will they get into the playoffs? There's three like a sacramento commits the playoffs i don't think anybody would be like shocked or mm. surprised but i think of lakers golden state or phoenix miss and one of because them. of the fact you have like a major superstar that's yeah. not going to make the playoffs like that's a huge deal and one of these three teams probably is not making it honestly two of them two of them might not, not make it yeah i think uh well, obviously I, I don't know i mean i i think malik monk being hurt hurts the Kings. I think Kings lot. lose. I, I think yeah. if Kings stay in the play in, they're not making the playoffs. That's why I'm really surprised that the Kings for me, I'm surprised that the Kings are down in this area because I would have had them up uh near the the, the or Clippers five, right? uh, yeah. or OKC, right? Yep. Because they that's how good they are. But like you said, with Malik Monk being out another month um, him probably would have won the uh NBA uh, six, six man. man. Yep. Uh it, He's just a huge offensive punch off the bench. He he's the reason the Lakers lost all four games to the uh obviously Sabonis matching up with AD helped the Kings a lot, but that dude, Darren Fox would come in off the bench and the Kings would run away with the game. Yeah. And they would do that not just to the Lakers, to a bunch of people. And having him as that secondary punch after Fox and Sabonis is a huge hit to them. Yeah. Huge. And it's gonna be if they do get in, it's gonna be difficult for them to win a series or even a game in a series yeah. without yeah. him. I just don't see the Sacramento Kings or New Orleans. I'm not even going to go uh, and say the Phoenix Suns. I, I I really think that New Orleans is going to fall. Um, but it's going to be interesting. If the – I mean, it all hinges on – a lot of it hinges on that Pelicans-Lakers game to close the season. That's the final yeah, game of the could, season yeah. for both of them. And, and, and Lakers play Memphis before that. So that should yeah. be a win if they don't <laughs> yeah. sleep. You, you don't don't sleep on that. You know. That should be a win. But the Lakers always, every time it was a game on the line when they played New Orleans, they just they just beat New Orleans yeah. and they make Zion just not look the like Zion. Tournament happened yeah, there too. Tournament, yeah. they, they, they dominated and made them look yeah. really bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Does Phoenix, you know, get ahead of New Orleans? Uh, what's their schedule? Phoenix has to play. I think they have to play the Pelicans next. Uh, no, Phoenix is, are at the Kings and then at the Timberwolves oh, the to Kings. end the season. Play, yeah. uh, and, and that's the thing, too. Timberwolves might need to win that game because they're a game behind Denver right now. Uh, it's Denver 1, Timberwolves 2, OKC 3, and, th and they have the same record. Do you know what the tiebreaker is? Does it say what the I'm not sure what the tiebreaker is. I'm not sure what the tiebreaker is. But uh, it's showing Timberwolves. At two. And oh, so they must have the tiebreaker. So they have then. the tiebreaker yeah. over OKC. Um, but yeah, with two games left, man, there's a lot that could still happen and a lot of movement that could happen. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes. And then Boston is just over there in the East being quiet, dominating <laughs> yeah. and, and like 20 games ahead of, you know, the next team. The, uh, 13, uh, 13 and a half over Milwaukee. That's crazy. Um, and that's the thing, too. So Milwaukee's second in the East. And they just look like a team. No, like I'm not afraid of Milwaukee for any no. any team. Like I don't think they pass the first round. I don't care who they play. I think if they, I think honestly, it's looking like because I don't think anybody obviously it happened, but I don't think anybody thinks the Hawks or the Bulls are going to come out of the plan. And if they no, I'm do, not picking either of them. If they do somehow, they're not going in a series. But if it is what everyone thinks it will be, some variation of the Sixers and the yeah. uh, Heat. If the Bucks play the Heat or the Sixers, especially the Sixers, with because the only reason the Sixers are that low is because Embiid missed so much of the game yeah, or so much like of the season. Games. Yeah, the Greek freak with the uh, uh, calf calf muscle strain. Yep. Yeah, and which I, I thought it was an Achilles. <laughs> when I saw it, I thought God. it was an Achilles. Yeah, yeah thank that would have been bad. It would have been bad. I think it's, it and it's already bad for them right now. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think they if they have to play the 76ers, they're losing that series. I think if they have to play the Miami, Miami. Heat, they're gonna. I think that's they're, they're gonna get Miami taken has all the way to right seven. Now too. 
I think they're going to be taken all the way to seven. I think that they probably could win that seventh game, but it's not going to be a cakewalk at all for the Bucks. And we've talked about it before. They lost their defense, who uh, Drew Holiday just signed, like, a, what, a four-year 135? Nice contract yeah. extension. Uh, shout out to him for that. I don't think if that was my team, I'd necessarily want that because he is getting older. But, I mean, he had a great year to prove that he is still that player. And when you took him away from Milwaukee, you kind of see where Milwaukee is. So I think that kind of helps Just elevate how, who he yeah, was, show yeah. who he was and how important he was to that team. And the fact that I, I just don't think Dame wants to be there. I I have not seen good body language from him. He didn't want to be there season. since day one. He yeah, wanted to. He thought he was going to be in Miami. Miami. Yeah, and that's that's the problem when you make a trade for. And a so if like Miami that. plays them, like you know, and it's going to be weird. It, I think the only example I could ever think of trading a player to where they absolutely didn't want to be that worked out is trading Kawhi to Toronto. Any other example of it, not yeah. that there's a ton of them. I can't I can't think of a single one that would work out in that way just because that's not where the person wants to be. Yeah. And it's not that's gonna have a negative effect on the and especially for a guy like Damian Lillard, who's already not a great defender. If he's not gonna be a high energy player yeah. because he doesn't want to be there and things and I'm sure if the Bucks were winning a bunch of games, he'd be super he'd be locked in. Well, but they were, and then they fired their coach yeah, and got a worse coach. So, well, I mean, I, that's another issue, too. Yeah. You fire a coach that had you at the top of the East in the middle of the season, uh, which they're still in, in the same position pretty much. So, uh, you know, it's it not it's not like much, they've yeah. moved position, but uh, the team doesn't look as good under Doc Rivers mm-hmm. right now at all. No, so. absolutely not. And I think... What they and I, you know, what's weird? It seems like Doc Rivers agrees with everybody that they did Adrian Griffin dirty, but he just can't come out and say it yet because he's still under contract with them and he's coaching. Well, he's them. the one that was dirty macking them. He couldn't <laughs> yeah. wait yeah, to he was, giving, he was con- uh, calling their games. He yeah. put his them bid the in bus. for the job while Adrian Griffin still had his job. Yeah. <laughs> stop. He needs to stop it. Yeah. Um, what do you guys? <laughs> I saw this recently that uh, there was some talk of going to the Lakers. Um, if they did get rid of Ham, which, you know, everyone's got their opinion on that, it would be Phil Handy who they elevated to be the head yeah, coach. I, I like Phil Handy. Yeah. I just don't know who he would be as a head coach. I don't know him, you know, yeah. know his style that good yet, but I know the players like him a lot. Because the thing with, like, Ham and the uh, Lakers is there was a stretch of games. I remember specifically watching these games thinking, this is going to hurt them at the end of the season. When they – uh they rested oh boy, AD yep. and two other, two or three other rotation guys against the Spurs on a back-to-back against the Spurs. They won the first game without LeBron, but had every other starter. They go and play the Spurs, I think, like a day later in San Antonio, and uh, they rest everyone but LeBron. And it's like, dude is forty years old. Yeah, he's not going to win no you sense. games like that anymore. And that one game right now is the difference between them being an eight, a 7 8 seed and needing to win one game yeah. to get into the playoffs and then being a 9 10 and needing two games and the way he handled the uh, starting lineup at the beginning of the season waiting I so I mean his long rotations to, have not been I, I don't understand what he does yeah. like to be honest and I like Darvin Ham I'm not but I don't, I don't like, like him as a coach I don't like to come for anybody's job like I don't like to be like this dude needs to get fired cuz how would I like it if someone came to my yeah, job his rotations like are but, really suspect it kind of reminds me of uh, another guy that the Lakers had at head coach who rotations was pretty bad. Luke, uh, Luke Wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, Luke was Luke was the same. That dude never should have been the head coach. Like, like yeah. seriously, like their rotation style is the same. And I don't know what they're looking at, but at the same time, you need to shorten up your your rotation. Yeah. You need to pick the good. Like Gabe Vincent. Hey, glad you're glad you're not injured anymore. But Bro, guess what? Chill, you're gonna have to chill watch. in case somebody gets hurt. You're gonna have to watch. You're you're, you're an gonna, insurance uh, player now. Seriously, yeah. Max Christie needs his minutes. He needs his minutes. You need to play yep. the young guys who are really hungry and going out and trying to win games yep. for you, uh, and and kind of tweak that lineup a little bit because at the end of the day, LeBron James, being the age he is still being able to go out and get buckets whenever he feels like it and the fact that he is over 41 percent from three point good lord the the, the, yeah. the best of his career like this dude is actually getting better with his when it comes to shooting yeah. the ball and i saw him in the golden state game actually driving playing in the post better than i've ever seen him play in the post i'm like somebody's getting ready for the playoffs so yeah. my thing is i thought the last game when they rested AD, that was the game that they should have played AD. You want to beat this Golden State Warrior team because now look at you. But but the thing is they didn't rest AD. AD's got hit in the same eye three times oh, yeah. in the past two Concussion, weeks. Maybe. Listen, man. <laughs> Cream and James Worthy were Hall of Fame All-Stars. Put those goggles on, bro, because 
your ankles are finally holding up, but like your vanity, eye, yeah. like put put the goggles on. I don't care. Use use the Horace Grant version of the of the goggles, but do something because you get hit in the you. same eye yeah. three times, bro, and missing games for it. Missing games <laughs> for getting hit in the eye. Yeah. But what's up with your eye attracting that pain? <laughs> I know. I don't it, get it. It might just be the worst luck ever because he left that. Uh, what game did he leave the half of the Golden State Warriors game? Right, he left that. Then uh, the first time I think. Yep. Yeah. It, it was a game where LeBron wasn't playing, so he uh-huh. ends up leaving, and then it's like, okay, now. And that's the second game in a row they played Golden Golden State basically without AD, and then and without LeBron. And that's a team you need to a those wins are going to help you just in general get ahead in the in yeah. the uh, in the play in in the playoffs, but also. The Golden State Warriors are hot on your tail. There's a real situation where, as of right now, the Warriors will play the Lakers in uh, crypto for the uh, 10-9 playing game. And but- not really, just for the fact that they've played one less game. So all they have to do, is, if we both win out, Golden State leaps fro- leapfrogs the Lakers. Yes, exactly. And that's why you can't, like... And those I th- are games you and, I, only a half and a game. I think that's what the Lakers need to do. They need to have Golden State leapfrog them because no, right they now, would leapfrog them as far as Lakers would have to play in Golden State and instead of Lakers playing at home against yeah. Golden State. I still think that you know right now Golden State and Clay Thompson uh, is starting to actually uh, click when it comes to shooting, but when it comes to the bottom line, I still think that the Lakers are just the better team. Oh, I 100% agree. They are, but you want home court in a playing game. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, and and, and that's home. why I think Clippers, I mean, uh, Golden State Warriors and Lakers both need uh, Sacramento to drop to 10, which is very possible to happen. Because they're playing Phoenix next and the Kings, right? And then... Uh, and they, like, I think that Malik Monk thing is going to yeah. hurt them a uh, lot. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Kings have the Suns. No, they have Pelicans tonight, Suns tomorrow, and then Blazers to end the season. That's two really tough games. That's two man. really tough games. Yeah. I, I think they lose both of those two games. Two really relevant games, too. Those are the teams that are the right next to them. The thing is, that those are all three home games uh, to end the season. So that's Light the beam. that could be an advantage for them, too. <laughs> Yeah. But man, they, this is gonna be fun. I mean, this the playoffs started right now. If you think about it, and it, it's it, it, it look, started. And I know we've been talking about the the Golden State Warriors, the the Sacramento, and 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 Phoenix. But guess who's creeping on the come up? Udoka got these boys over in Houston, like yeah. ready to really snatch somebody's spot. <laughs> yeah, but they're out of it now. Yeah, they, I think they, they, they went got on that big eleven game uh, winning streak or twelve game winning streak. I think with like the last game or something, they they got bounced from uh, contention. But that team next year, man, come on, man, is gonna be is gonna be special with Jalen Green and uh, Alperin Sengun. Yep. That that team is who, who they're missing. They've been missing him for the past two months with with his injury, and so. Mm-hmm. And uh, that Thompson kid is just going to keep developing oh, and getting yeah. better. Both of the Thompson twins, but yeah. especially uh, I don't remember the first name Azur. I think he's the one that plays yeah. in Houston. But uh, I thought Porter Jr. would have, would you know, had he not play- gotten tr- trouble outside yeah, yeah. of basketball, I think he would have added to just the growth of this team too. And that uh, I like that, even though he kind of like got clowned on a little bit because of the like shirt and stuff. But Tarik uh, or Tari Eason, mm-hmm. that dude is a dog. He's yeah, going to he be important dog. for that team. He if like. Dylan Brooks, I think, is probably the heart and soul of that team, like their energy and their... And they need a guy like that. Yeah, whatever you think of him. I think that Eason kid could take Brooks's place if Brooks becomes, like, unplayable or distraited or something at some point. I think that Eason kid can play that Draymond Green role for for that Houston Rockets team in the future. I think they're going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun to watch now. Yeah, they are. Good young squad. Um... All right, anything else in the NBA you guys want to touch on before we uh, get out? I just don't see anybody overall, and and I'm going a, I'm to a get on my on my board for this one. Uh, I don't see anybody beating Denver. I just think that they no. – just the continuity that they have, the way that they play with each other, the comfortability that they have with each other. I don't see anybody beating Denver for the title this year. I don't care who you are. I just do no. not see it. I think an injury is the only thing that might that's stop it. them. Or, Maybe the injury bug, but yeah, that's that, it. That, that, yeah. that's, but the that's way that the, the, the way them. that their chemistry is, bro, I don't even see Boston doing it. They're special. Nah, and that would be the only team. 
my uh, my like fan, my little fanboy would like to see uh, Anthony Edwards take a deep run with it because he is he's my mo- he's my favorite player Mine to watch in, yep. the, in the NBA. He Mine is too. special. He's fun to watch. He's charismatic. I would love for the Timberwolves to make it all the way to the finals, yeah. but I just don't see it happening unless unless uh, Nikola or somebody on literally anyone else on that yeah. squad could get hurt and they'd still probably make it. Yeah. But if he gets hurt, they'd be in trouble. Well, here's the thing: because Carl uh, uh, Anthony Towns is still hurt. Yeah, for Timberwolves. Yeah. So I mean, to start the playoffs with him probably being out, I think they uh, could survive be... the first round without him. Ooh, okay. If let's Nas let's Reed, look at that real quick. If Nas I do, Reed plays I do not, well, oh, Nas, Nas Reed been is playing it. well. He, he's actually low key been playing better than the Cat. Remember, we wouldn't have seen Nas yeah. Reed. Nas is dope. Yeah, Nas, Nas is really yeah. dope. So if they stay in second, that means they're playing seven, seven or eight. I low key am taking Lakers or Golden State over gonna, the Timberwolves. I think I agree with Lakers, uh, I wouldn't not, take, Golden, not State. Golden State. Not Golden State. The Timberwolves are too big. It's all about matchups. Yeah. And I yeah. think that they've had Golden the State numbers. They match up all, with them well. Even yeah, the game yeah. they lost, LeBron's foot was on the right, line. Right. Uh, and they they would have won that game. They, that almost seems like, I think Ant is better than Ja, but it feels like a repeat of last year's series with the Grizzlies. Mm. I believe Ant is happens. better than Ja. Uh, he's yeah. way better than Ja all around. But ja, I, ja, Ja's really good. I'm not taking anything away. I guess the one question I want to ask you guys before we move on from the basketball talk is, if it's not Boston out of the East, who do you think it is? I think it'll be the 76ers Philly. if it's not Boston. I just... <sighs> I don't, I don't really like anyone in the East right now. And I don't think Miami's going to do what they did last year. I don't think they have enough. No, I don't. That would uh, be even crazy. if playoff Jimmy explodes, I just don't think... I, I don't think Boston's going to be sleeping again no, like they were no. last year. I'm so, going to go with a dark horse, and it is a dark horse, but the Indiana Pacers, man, the way that they are playing, when they man, play well, they, they play when well, they yeah. play well, no one can beat that team. And they got Siakam there now, so, I mean, we saw them in the in, in the uh, yeah. in-season tournament. A dude uh, who you don't realize has championship experience. Siakam yeah, brings Siakam's, a level of... Siakam's yeah. really good. I yeah. think that was a huge pickup for them that's been yeah. slept on because it's Indiana. Um, and then, who knows? Maybe Caitlin Clark could has, play, for, and he, play with them, too, and they really yeah. go over the top and, and win it all. And I'm going to need fans to stop saying that Caitlin Clark can play in the w, I mean, in the NBA. There's she not one... Would, Get, There's not one female that could play in the she NBA. She would get demolished. And you can say I'm hating all you want to. No, nah, but it's being s- realistic. S- stop, bro. That's the problem with when people say that is it kind of forces people to say something that sounds rude. But it's not rude. It's just. If she went out and tried to get guard Jalen Green, he would do a 980 dunk on her <laughs> head. Like, what are we talking about? So I think the best comparison of that is uh, I don't remember what te- uh, different sports, same concept. I don't remember what tennis grade it was, but they asked him, they said, do you think Serena could win? Or he said, I think Serena's the best women's tennis player in the world. Somebody was like, why'd you say women's? Why didn't you say the best? And he's like, well, because if he played, if she played Roger Federer, he would destroy her. And or you know, Pete Sampras. And, and you know who else knows or that? Or Michael Chang. Like Serena, the Serena knows that. But Come on. that's what I was going to say. Serena, in a completely different interview, said if I played Andy Roddick Stop. in a full game, Stop. I wouldn't score a point. She herself said that. So it's like, we're not trying to be rude. There's just a different physiology. Because here's the thing. If they were good enough to play in the men's league, They would. Because you would make a lot... Caitlin Clark would make a lot more money in the NBA than she will in the WNBA. Even if she went to the big three like Ice Cube offered her She's the four or five She's million dollars. She's going to get hurt. Come on, bro. Like if and Jay, that five million dollars was not worth her knowing no, that she's gonna and they foul in the big three. They don't they don't play no, the NBA style no. of And the one thing I feel like I, I always try to like specify to people when I talk about this is if you in a game a horse or sh- like any kind of shooting, Caitlin can hold her own. Absolutely. If there's not a six foot seven dude in front of yeah. her playing defense. Absolutely, she's just as of course because you're shooting around. That's not the full yeah, game exactly. of basketball. You saw like Sabrina, uh, Sabrina uh, UNESCO mm-hmm. held her own against Steph and everybody else in the three point yeah. contest from the three point line. Um, but it's just different when you start to. So no one's saying that the women are less skilled than the men. Right. It's just the just let them be where they're at and let's yeah. enjoy the game where where it is. Let's yeah. enjoy the women's game. Let's enjoy the men's game. No, they're not pedestrians like us. Like they if you just, throw me I, I in the destroyed. WNBA, I probably could average a couple points. But I'm pretty sure some girls out there who probably break my knees yeah. open. Right. I'm so, five seven. I ain't doing nothing on the bro, WNBA. I played with court. some of the girls in high school, bro. Like they would come to, out there for lunch sometimes and just you know. 
Yeah. Stop stop having these unfair, unrealistic expectations for people. Yeah. Caitlin Clark yeah. could play in the WNBA. I mean, in the NBA. Because then she gets the questions asked, and then it's like you get mad at her answers or whatever. But yeah, it's. Well, like the Britney Grinder thing with Yeah, because yeah, if, cousin. She, if she's guarding Steph Curry and having to chase him around screens all day, bro, she wouldn't last a half of yeah. a first half quarter. And people don't realize Sabrina, or Sabrina, um, Caitlin is 5'7. Steph Curry is 6'2". Stop, man. He's 6'2", 6'3". Yes. <laughs> He's the, he would be one of the biggest people on every WNBA yeah. court. How old is, I mean, how tall is Isaiah Thomas? He was like 5'11"? The, yeah. the one in the league now? Yeah. Yeah, he's probably like 5'10". Well, even... So, uh, Caitlin, 5'7". Yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> She'd and be like Isaiah's a Nate Robinson. struggling to get in the league, and he'd be the best player in the WNBA. Yeah. yeah. Nah. But, By uh, far. <laughs> yeah. But that, with all that said, you could put someone like Isaiah Thomas in the WNBA. It's a, that's easy, fifty or sixty points average. Easy, yeah. And that's not to be rude. It's, it's just not to be rude. It's truth. a different game. Yeah. Like, I'm being rude. He'll go over and <laughs> have more points than Joanna Man times three. Stop. <laughs> all right, let's move on to UFC 300. It is here, folks. I'm this excited. weekend, uh, I turned on the press conference a little too late, but there's a this card is ridiculous. The more I look at it, the more ridiculous the better, it is. Yeah. And, you know, looking at it on screen, uh, you know, on the website and everything, it's like, that's one thing, right? But then seeing all the media stuff going on this week and just watching all them walking around in the same room, you just don't see that. You oh, don't see that. that. I level mean, of talent together. Yeah, the opening card is Cody Garbrandt versus Davison Figueredo. That's ridiculous. That could easily headline any, any UFC fight night. That could even low key almost. It would definitely be a main card in any other UFC pay per view. You would never have that not in in the uh, in the main card. And this is opening up the night, so there's not one fight. I mean, you know, we have the watch parties here at the studio. I'm inviting everybody to, to the pre I'm coming. to the prelims because you know the main card is is the the topping, but everything is really good. So we're gonna get into our picks, even though we did some last week with uh, D1. But I want to get into our picks, and these are going to be my final picks uh, because last week was kind of like, you know, just kind of guessing around. Week, or, an extra week to think yeah, about it. you get a it. week to think about it, yeah. uh, hear what they're saying. Uh, Bobby Green's in there probably. He might be a little high. Um, no, I don't know if they could smoke before the fights. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> well, depends on how good it is. I know some fighters, like, like, quit smoking, you know, a month or two before the fight and so everything, they don't, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you notice, there's a fighter that his eyes have been a lot clearer. Um, but uh, man, let's let's go through these fights once again. And whatever we said last week, who cares? We're changing our minds. <laughs> uh, we got Garbrandt and Figueredo, uh, Bantamweight to open up the card. Early prelim. It's so weird seeing early prelims and seeing all these guys on the early prelims. I know, crazy. Uh, but Paul, you 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 trained with D one who we had on last week, so yep. he's coached you a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, first of all, what's that been like? And then uh, give us a pick in this first fight. Uh, j- to keep it short, D one is uh, to say the least. I'm not surprised he was Strickland's striking coach for the fight he beat Izzy with. Uh, D one breaks things down well. He he's uh, very personable. He cares about you. Um, and he's an easy person to take instruction from. All the guys over there, Nick Sick, they're all great dudes over there. Like you could not have a better. It's the. It's in my opinion, not just because like it's the gym I go to, just literally accolade wise, it's the best gym, MMA gym in the in the world. There's not. There's not another one that I would put above it. Um, but uh, the first fight, are we talking about now? Yeah. Uh, Davison Figueiredo versus uh, Cody Garbrandt. I think Cody's in trouble. I think Cody is in trouble. Davison isn't starving himself to get down to uh, to flyweight anymore. He was a massive flyweight. He was oh, the yeah. biggest dude in the entire division. Um, and Cody is, I he's got a puncher's chance, um, in my opinion. But uh, I say that, and Cody trains at an extreme. So those dudes get guys ready in a way that other people don't. So I wouldn't be surprised if Cody went out there and put on a show. But Davison is special, yeah. I think. I think he's going to have an opportunity to show that. Um, Is this the first time uh, up in Bantamweight? I believe so. Yeah. Maybe since, maybe he might have fought at Bantamweight. Uh, he might have fought at 135 a couple times oh, before. before he got yeah. in the but UFC. I mean, yeah, I mean, after uh, being champion and stuff like that. Anyway. Nah, yeah, this is his first up at a, at a Bantamweight. 
I feel like Garbrandt's an up and down fighter to me. Uh, this is going to be a really good fight, man. Uh, yeah, it's hard to pick, but I, I'm going to go with Cody Garbrandt. Um, he, he's he's the underdog in this, uh, plus 250. Uh, Figueredo's really good, but he's also lost some, some fights recently. So, you know, uh, that, that has a lot. But, I mean, these two fighting styles are... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. They both will turn into brawlers. Yeah. And I think that if Davison lets that happen, that's the version of this fight he loses if yeah. he lets it turn into a brawl. Yeah. I'm going to go with my my pick that I picked last time, which is Cody. Got Cody winning this, man. Okay. Especially, like you said, if it gets to a brawl, man. Davison is in trouble. Man. He hasn't, he's not used to getting hit by dudes who are hit the same size as him. Yeah. Which I think could definitely become a problem. All right, next fight, the old man, Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. Uh, Bobby Green's number 14 right now. This is a fight that could go either way, too. These, these two were supposed to fight so many times um, in the past, too. It just never happened. But uh, Bobby Green and Jim Miller, I think Jim's old, obviously. He's been around since 1942. <laughs> I fought on 100, 200, and 300. That's wild. That's crazy. That's wild, bro. Man, I'm I'm going with Bobby Green though. Uh he's younger, he's hungrier. Uh was it his last fight where he was getting like he got demolished? Oh, he was knocked out was and the Jaylen ref would Turner, not yeah. the ref would not stop the fight. Yeah, that was it the was last embarrassing. Fight. Yeah. Uh I don't I hope that ref doesn't work anymore because that was really bad. That was really bad. Um but I'm going with Bobby Green. I think he needs redemption from that. And then Jim Miller, uh props to him for you know. 100 200 and 300 like that's a long time to be fighting and still being able to you fight know, a guy like bobby green yeah so i mean i'm going with i'm going with bobby green though i think my heart says jim miller but my uh my brain says uh bobby green but if jim miller can get the fight to the ground which i think is hard harder said than or easier said than done yeah um I think Jim can make it interesting if he gets it there. But if Jim tries to box and kickbox with yeah, Bobby, Green for, Bobby Green for 15 yeah. minutes, he's in trouble. So I'm going to go Bobby uh, with the caveat that if Jim gets it to the ground, Jim has the most, I think the most, uh, second most submission finishes in UFC history behind Charles. So he could be in trouble if it goes there. Yeah. I'm going Jim Miller. I'm going with the old man strength. Uh, <laughs> hey, just, I'm not mad at you. you know, just got to go. <laughs> going there. All righty. Next one, we got Jessica Entrage and Mariana Rodriguez. I know the R is silent and there's like an H in there somewhere. But uh, same thing, man. We talked about it last week. Jessica Andrade is so up and down right now. Yeah. Sometimes she looks like the greatest female fighter in her division, whatever division she's in, because she goes flips all divisions the all the time. Um. But she's so up and down to me. Like, I just don't know. Like, she, she'll look great and then just look really bad. So I, I'm going to go with her just because I, I, I think it's, you know, time to win again. But but yeah. Rodriguez is really good, too, man. This is going to be a very e even fight. I think it goes decision. But I'm, I'm going to pick Jessica Andrade. Uh, I think I'm going to be completely transparent. I'm going to go Andrade because I don't know enough about Rodriguez. I don't know okay. if I've watched That's a fair. single fight of hers. Andraj, I d almost don't think it. If it goes as a decision, I don't know a lot about Rodriguez, but I feel like that'll probably be in Rodriguez's mm. favor. I think if Marina's uh, good, dude. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, she's good. Yeah, They're I both just, really good, but uh, yeah, she's probably the only fighter. Uh, Rodriguez is probably the only fighter on the card that I don't know, and that speaks to how crazy this yeah. card is. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Rodriguez in this one. I'm gonna go opposite again. Yeah, you just like the hair. <laughs> um <laughs> in next fight we got Jalen Turner versus Renato Mociano. Renato Moicano. Renato Moicano. Moicano? <laughs> Trey, your turn. Um No, say the name and then I'm not saying the name. <laughs> Who you got in this fight? I'm going to go green. Turner, you mean? Turner, I mean. Oh, Same thing. That's you, funny. You know, <laughs> he, he thinks I'll black. Jalen like. Turner. 
all all Jalen's look alike. Uh, not my Jalen. Nah, Jalen looks way <laughs> different than that. That is a different way to spell Jalen, though. I kind of like that. Yeah, it is. It's aesthetically pleasing. Um, I'm gonna go Jalen too. I think it's yep. Jalen's time. I think he's gonna he's gonna be a soon to be serious contender yep. in that division. Yep. But Hanato is he is not to be overlooked. And if Turner does, he's going to be in, in trouble. But I'm going to go Turner. Yeah. All right. I'm going with Jalen Turner as well. Uh, and that closes out the early prelims. And that's now crazy that that's, the that's, early, that's prelims. early prelims. And now we got prelims. So, Deke Youssef versus Diego Lopez. This is going to be a good fight, too. Um, I'm going with Diego in this. And I Ooh. think I picked Sadiq last I week. Did. Um Man, I'm, I'm gonna go with Diego. There's something about it. Like I, I feel like his his energy, just watching him in the media and, and stuff like that this week, is at a different level than Sadiq. Um, so, so, I'm gonna go with Diego. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Diego too. I think much like Turner, he is on an upwards trajectory. Sadiq has kind of been there for a little while. Um, but I think Diego is scrappy and he's special and he's going to, and the crowd is going to be behind Diego. He's a crowd favorite. Yeah. And I think in such a packed venue and such a big event, that's going to have a lot to do with it. Um, but this is one of those fights that I would never bet on. Like I would never, ever bet on, no this money on this fight. No one. money on this fight. There, Either there's a dudes. fight I might be betting on. We're going to get to that in a little bit. I'm going to go Sadiq. I think I know which one you're going to, I got some things to say about one fight in particular. Come on Sadiq. Which one? It's in uh, the main card? Not, uh, yes. Ooh. Might be the same fight? Yes. I think I have different... The redhead? Thing. Redhead? Redhead. No. no. Talking about... Oh, wait. Is Bone Nickel redhead? Yeah, I think. No. But yes, Either Bone red or We're on the same page. We'll get there. Orangey we'll blonde, there. but that... um, Listen, man. Put $20 on that just because of how <laughs> yeah, big this how spread is. A, so if he gets yeah. upset, but... Uh, you, you said... Sadiq. Sadiq? Okay. You guys know he's picking all the black guys. Um, <laughs> all right, next fight. Kayla Harrison coming from PFL. Uh, super dope fighter in the PFL. I know she's had to cut a lot of weight. I know she's sick of that question. Uh, she looks good. Uh, we'll see what happens on the actual weight cut tonight and tomorrow. Like, what's what's that going to look like? Uh, is she down enough so it's not like a hard weight cut? We'll see against Holly Holm. Uh, who Rhonda has been jumping in and kind of like talking junk. It's like, bro, she knocked you out. Cold. And now Rhonda is saying that when Holly Holm knocked her out, and she's just not bringing this up, a decade eight, later. eight years later, yeah. nine years later, that Stop I was it. concussed. Stop I had a, it. You know when you were concussed? When you got hit in the head in with the that jaw. leg from Holly Holm. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to accountability, man? Just, just take the loss. Like Holly the loss. was a better fighter. You, you, you had your time. You were great. You you brought the women's division to where it's at. You brought Pioneer. women's MMA to where it's at. Yeah. There's nothing anyone could say about that. But then women got better. You got better women in the UFC. You fought Holly Holm and then disappeared and, and went whooped. on your depression to retreat and all that because you got beat and you thought you were going to be there forever. And then you came back, got handled by Amanda Nunes. Yeah, I don't understand how she could think. And then went to the she, WWE. Yeah. Like You did fine. You made a lot of money. You're super well like, for You're, yourself, you're yeah. a superstar. Yeah, but Holly Holm would beat you again. Uh, and stop oh, making excuses. Yeah, stop making excuses, especially ten years later. Yeah, Tell totally me you're concussed yeah. before the fight. Give me, give me your excuses before the fight, not ten right. years after the fight. You right. got beat. But Holly Holm is, you know, she's struggled as of late. She's definitely a lot older now than she was when she fought Ronda and, and got the championship. Uh, but Kayla Harrison, I mean, this is, you know, obviously UFC is trying to use Kayla as they need women. Uh, Amanda's not there anymore. She retired. So they need a name in the women's division, no matter what division it is. They Valentina just need a woman's just name lost, there. Yeah. Valentina's lost twice yeah. to uh, Alexa Grasso. Oh, so I'm going with Kayla in this because I, you know, but same thing. Like Kayla is, you could stand up, and I don't know if you want to stand up with Holly. She's going to want to get this to the ground. Holly doesn't want to be on the ground with Kayla Harrison. If it goes to the ground, I I even think if it goes to the ground one time, Kayla takes her out. Well, so I'm going with Kayla. This uh, this might be a strange comparison after what we just talked about. Kayla Harrison is not an entirely different fighter from the fighter that Ronda Rousey was, mm. and I think because of that, my like, you know, you you speak from experience after Holly handled Ronda, I think. 
Holly definitely has a better chance in this fight than people are giving her. But I am going to say I think that Kayla's gonna be able to take. Why is her Jamal down. always mad though? <laughs> what is he? At? I don't know what he said, man. I should have turned the captions on. <laughs> but uh, but I'm trying I'm to gonna, watch the press conference while we're doing. This I'm show. gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Kayla, but uh, I do think Holly could have something special again in store for yeah. putting somebody who everybody thinks is going to be her out. but kayla is way bigger than ronda oh 100 so i mean i think that yeah. is that's why i'm going know, kayla <laughs> yeah and you know i think kayla would destroy ronda too if they fought in their primes both we'll, of them in their primes we'll see how kayla's chin is i'm gonna go with my earlier pick because the weight cut yep we're gonna see how the chin is and i'm gonna go with my earlier pick that i did and go holly and all this right. one all right moving on featherweight bout uh Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. They both are they both live out here. Uh, does Calvin train at Extreme? No, Aljamain has before. Aljamain's been, been, Aljamain's been, been cornered by a Nixig before for the first uh Yon fight. Okay. Um so this is gonna be a really good fight too, man. I'm excited about this one. Uh I'm going with Aljo. I think he's gets hated on too much. I think he's a much better you know star than they let him be yeah he's... Uh, they don't let him be the star that i think he is they 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 asked him yesterday if he got offered a rematch against sean o'malley because he you know he had the belt you know what three oh, wow, he, he yeah. defended three times i believe yep um and sean o'malley comes in beats him once and there's no rematch uh they asked him they said they didn't offer him the rematch but he asked for the rematch and they they said no uh, which I don't, I didn't agree with, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. You know, we, we saw that. Yeah. We saw Dana's body language. Um, cause they want to make Sean O'Malley the star. Cause he has the personality. He but has now the look. gets his chance. Yeah. But even Rob, like how long has it taken him to get his chance? They, they skipped over him and, and went well, to, the, he, uh, they wouldn't fight. I'll Cheeto. join Rob wouldn't fight. No, I'm talking bestest. about against Sean. He should have oh, been yeah, up, yeah. up next against Sean. hundred percent. And they gave him Cheeto Vera who. Did not belong in the no. octagon with Sean. No. At all. Uh, he got pieced up the whole time until the last five seconds when uh, Cheeto was like, well, if this was, uh, if there was more rounds or if there was no time limit. But there's it's like, not, Okay, bro. So. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Quit making excuses after the fight. Uh, I'm going I'm going with Aljo, man. Uh, Calvin Cater is very good. I just think Aljo is a, in a different uh, world than him, to be honest. I think Aljo is going to maul him. Yeah, I think he's going to get Cater down and Cater is going to be in trouble. I think Aljo literally mauls him, takes him down, does what he does to most people, gets on his back and chokes him out. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the uh, Aljo too. Uh, you guys are picking a black guy. It's really, really strange. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, um, I, mean, I pick Turner. Pick too many I pick Jalen Green. I mean, Turner. <laughs> Jalen Green. Um, all right, next fight. Yuri Prohoska versus Alexander Rakic. Um, Yuri was right on top, man. And, and, and Rakic is the favorite. Mm. That's crazy. Barely, but I, I listen, man. Yuri's gonna win this fight. The last yeah. fight he had, he was coming off an injury. He's finally and he was uh, winning the whole time. Healthy now, he was winning. I still think they stopped it too early. Um, but I'm going with Yuri Prohoska on this. I, uh, I'm going to agree. I think Rakic definitely, like, you can see the odds are super close. It's going to be a great fight. Or it'll be a super boring one, but Yuri doesn't uh, usually have that happen. But I'm going to go Yuri. Yep. Sticking to my earlier pick, Yuri. All right. That ends the prelims. Yikes. That's crazy. Yuri was just one of the biggest names, and now he's in the prelims. I know. Uh, starting the main card, we have wrestling superstar and that's what i want to talk about bo nickel versus cody brundage it went down a little bit i thought it was 20 minus 22 the other day uh it's but minus 21 down, yeah. listen man if you guys put 50 bucks on this and cody brundage beats him which i don't think it should be this big of a spread to be honest because i think this is definitely the best ufc fighter bo nickel is is has faced yeah um, cause he hasn't faced anybody. Let's face it. They're, they're trying to build him up, which is smart. Yeah. You know, a lot of people know him. Giving him time to work on his strength. As a wrestler, you know, he's won a lot. Uh, what school did he go to? He went to uh, Penn State, which is the uh, premier kind of college for it's, it's UConn in the mid 
2010s yeah. for women's basketball. It's it's they won. They broke the record for winning for the amount of points scored at the NCAA yeah. tournament this year. Like they won by double the amount the next team had. See, and it's smart. Like, of course, you want to get a guy like this and and let him, you know, get some fights in first uh, before you just throw him out there because you're trying to build his name up. So, listen, it's smart. But I think this is the r- first real fight he's going to have. I like Brundage. I don't think Brundage is going to win necessarily, no. but. If he won, I wouldn't be as surprised as the spread is. Yeah. So if you put fifty dollars on that, you can, a lot you of can, money you to can be win made. some money off of you know not a lot of money. Yeah. So um, I like Bo Nickel. I don't like the overhyped. I definitely think this should be in the prelim. If you have, let's go back to the screen, man. If you got you got Bo Nickel and Brundage in the main card, you're telling me even Yuri and, and Rockage couldn't be both of those. Al Jermaine, yeah, and Cater. Couldn't be. I wouldn't put, you know, Kayla's new in this. Um, I could go all the way to the bottom and say Garbrandt and Figueredo w- could be over that. I would so, definitely put the two final prelims over this. But for sure. They for want sure. Bo Nickel in a primetime yeah. spot. And they want that name, 300. And I think they're looking at it like... And, and here's how... I, I was talking to Jamal the other day. I'm like, people are going to look at 300 in two to three years and realize how big this card really is. Yeah. I don't think, I think people are sleeping on the card. Uh, we talked about it before. Dana overhyped the main events and because stuff like that before it happened. There yeah. was things he couldn't even do that, you know, he, he was promising. Yeah. Uh, so that's not, uh, that's not the fighter's fault. But when you look at all these fighters, there's a lot of young guys. It's the next generation of the UFC. These, most of these guys in this card are going to be superstars. So I think they're looking at that too. Like, is Bo Nickel going to be a superstar in a couple of years to where we can put him in the main card? And now you can look back on that and, and, and make it make more sense. And I think that's, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. But this card is amazing. So for, for anybody saying it's not, tripping. you can't ever go from early prelim to, to the main event and see this many amazing fighters and amazing fights that, that could be happening. Yeah. So uh, I agree. I was getting it out of the way. I think, uh, I think Nickel's going to win this fight. I think it is more dangerous than the spread is letting letting on. But the thing I want to say about Bo Nickel, and because it drives me nuts when I watch people talk about this, they're like, they talk about him in this such a high regard as a wrestler. And he is. He's an incredible wrestler. Yeah. But he is not world level. Do you know why Bo Nickel went to the uh, MMA? He couldn't make the world team. The mm. So the 86 kilogram field, which is what he probably would have wrestled in in the world team trials, which are about to happen. David Taylor, Nickel wrestled him three times, couldn't beat him. Zahid Valencia, Nickel... <sighs> Come in here with a fax. N- Nickel uh, wrestled him once. See, I when, know nothing about wrestling. When Zahid was 19 years old and he beat him, he would not beat Zahid hmm. now. Aaron Brooks, four-time NCAA national champion. He's not beating Brooks. But at the end of the day, he's not beating David Taylor, so he's not making the world team. The other one he may have competed at is 97 kilograms. A guy named Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox are at the top of that weight class. He wouldn't have beaten either of those dudes. Couldn't be Cox. Or, or you go down to 74 kilograms, which is the probably the farthest he could stretch down, which is like 166. Um, he would have wrestled Jordan Burroughs and Kyle Dake. He's not beating either of those two. He went hmm. to MMA because he couldn't make a world team. Not because he's not special, yeah. but because wrestling freestyle wrestling in america right now is at a level it has never been he would not have made a world team dude I, thanks for bringing that because i people don't, need I don't know stop, wrestling like people that people need to stop saying yeah. that david taylor is maybe the greatest wrestler of all time he wasn't beating david taylor so could you see happening. any of them eventually come no over they to make UFC. too much money and there's too much prestige in winning an olympic gold medal and mm. a world medal if if bo nickel could have won a world gold medal yeah he would have. He wouldn't be an MMA. There's a different kind of prestige to being an Olympic level yeah. wrestling, ch- excuse me, champion. Yeah. Like you see, Daniel Cormier gets all his hype. He took bronze. Yep. It's a different level of prestige from the UFC, which not the UFC isn't, but yeah. yeah. It's different. Anyways, I do. It's the Olympics. That's my. All right, who you got? Bo. It's my earlier pick. All right, we got like two minutes left in the show. Uh, next one. Charles Oliveira versus Armand uh, Sarukian. I think I went with Charles last time. I'm, I'm sticking with Charles, man. This is going to be a really good fight, though. Uh, Charles is older, but he needs to win this fight if he's going to compete for uh, the belt again. Uh, and but Sarukian is really good. I'm going to go. Sarukian is really good, but I'm going with Charles. I'm going to go with Sarukian. He his fight with Islam was 
stellar, and I want to see a short that notice again. fight. That was a short notice fight. They, you know, he could have if he had more time. I think he only had, took it on three weeks. Yes, Saryukin's going to do the same thing. I think to Oliveira that Islam did. He's not going to be afraid to take him yeah. down yeah. and fight him there, which is what got Gaethje and Poirier in trouble and Chandler. They were afraid to go down with him. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm taking uh, Armand because <laughs> I said that last time, but I'm going to touch again, man. He's he's I, I just he got this one. All right, a BMF championship belt. Well, not championship, BMF belt. Yes, let's not call it a championship. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Uh, this is going to be a great fight too. I hope it goes all three rounds and i hope someone gets knocked out in the third with a minute left that i, I want to see them keep fighting it sucks that that's going to be three rounds i know what is it oh it's a championship it's a championship. they might be, it might five, be five it might be five rounds yeah. i forgot about that so it could be five rounds i don't think it's going past three though someone's good someone's going down like these guys are going to be swinging the whole time no one's trying to go to the ground yeah you're not going to see them on the ground if you do they're getting right back up well that's the um, reason i think it, kg is going to win that fight. i'm going with justin kg yeah yep yeah and this I, is a different division earlier. for max holloway too well max can't knock dudes out at featherweight he's not going to go up to lightweight and start knocking dudes especially out, especially someone like gagey yeah. yeah but who knows max is capable of anything yeah i'm going gagey 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 all right um Dre, go ahead and say the names. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we got Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhao Nan. Zhao Nan. There you go. Look at that, man. Good job, Paul. I, I heard it said like I got Wei Li. <laughs> I got Wei Li. Uh, I got Wei Li too. I don't. I mean, I can't remember who I had picked. You said the Chinese girl. I didn't. Um, <laughs> which is both of them. I Wei Li. Wei Li. All right. I think that's who I picked last time. And then the main event of the night, Alex Pereira versus Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Uh, you know who I'm going with. Got to go with Jamal because um, if I didn't, he'd be mad. But I really do. <laughs> I really do. Listen, man, and I talked to him the other day, and he his confidence level is very high. He's healthy, so he's not faking that his Achilles is okay. He would not have taken this fight. If, Why would he vacate the title because of his Achilles, but then fake that it was okay? Exactly, like, that doesn't make any sense. And the thing too, when you're when you're training for a fight, if the Achilles was bad, it would have popped. You can't train, yeah. It would have popped. It, it wouldn't have been good. Um, so he, he's definitely healthy. Uh, he's in great shape. Uh, he, you know, he's gonna make weight easily. Uh, but listen, man, I watched I watched the Glover Teixeira fight again. So did I. That Jamal uh, had. Paced I've watched Alex a lot of his fights again. He, j I, I just think he's. Be I, I think he's a lot stronger than Alex. Alex, the mm. fights he's won, he beat Izzy, which Izzy was dominating the whole fight, and he beat him at, in the last round when it looked like he was done. Yeah. I feel like that was stopped a little too early. Izzy's the champion. Let him fall to the ground. Let him get knocked all the sure. way out. Yeah. Because Izzy does these things where he moves around where it looks like sometimes he is knocked out. And he did that in the I second agree fight with you more against on that Alex. One than on the Yuri one. Even Yuri, like, and Yuri said he was out for a second. So even yeah. Yuri, but was he just saying that because it did get called? I think even with that, like, we've seen people like get beat down before they call the fight. So when it's a championship, I just. Bobby Green. Exactly. <laughs> I just don't like to see it called too soon. So. But even with that, so Yuri was, I think, beating Alex the whole time I, I agree. in that fight. And and Alex clipped him and knocked him out. Listen, he, he did what he had to do, right? Um, the fight before that against Jan Blachowicz, that was an even fight to me. I think it could have easily went either, went either way. either way, 100%. And it went Alex's way. Um, Glover Teixeira was dominating Yuri, and then Yuri beat him uh, at the end as well. Uh, and... They were about to rematch when Yuri got hurt. Uh, Jamal dominated Glover Teixeira from start to finish. Like Glover got him to the ground, and Jamal was able to get back up. J Glover tried to take him down ten times, and, and he stopped it. I mean, he yeah. was st he was stopping yeah. everything. Jamal's learned. He's he studies fighting. He watches all these. Uh, I think Jamal is going to win. I've been saying second round KO, so I'm going to stick with that. But I like Jamal in this fight. Plus, I want to have the belt back in the studio. <laughs> so uh, bring that belt Fair back. Enough. But uh, Dre, who you got? I, I picked Jamal last time, so I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. Paul. 
I'm going to go Jamal for all the same reasons you just laid out. I think Jamal looked better against the same level of light heavyweight competition than Alex has. Alex has not looked like the killer. He was at middleweight at yep. light heavyweight. Um, and I know Jamal's not going to, but if Jamal does take this to the ground, Alex is in trouble. I think Alex is in trouble. His wrestling, it could. I mean, guys get better. They're students of the game. And Jamal wants to knock him out. And that's the only reason I don't think he'll yeah. take him to the ground because he wants to show everyone he could knock him out. But I think Jamal is going to hit him square. And we saw what happened when Izzy, who was as much small, not much smaller, but a smaller dude, hit him square. And he him went out. out. All so, the way out. Lights out. I'm going to go Jamal with the obvious caveat that I'm not going to be surprised if Alex pulls it out. Yeah, yeah. Alex, Alex can win. I mean, this is going to be a, a great fight. I think it's a great main card. I know it took people a while to really start seeing that, but uh, yeah. like I told Jamal, like all the people that are hating on the fight and hating on the main card, these are two guys that are going to be, I think, stars. And I think, you know... Uh, Alex is a two-way champion. Yeah. And Jamal's a former champion that hasn't lost the championship. Yeah. You know, you only, he's only lost one fight in the UFC. So, I mean, it's going to be a great fight, great weekend, uh, great event. So I'm looking forward to it, man. So if you guys, you know, if you guys know me and want to come to the studio, hit me up. If you got my number, if you don't, that means you don't know me enough to come to my watch party. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be doing a watch party at the studio and it's going to be early 5 p.m. Is that right? The early prelims? I think it might be 3 p.m. for the Yikes. early prelims. Yeah. So I don't know about that. But. Oh, early prelims are 3 p.m. So yeah. yeah, three or five. I mean, when listen, I'll be here the whole time. So, yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll be coming through. For thank sure. everyone for tuning in. Uh, please share the video uh, if you're watching it. And uh, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and leave a comment in there. Like the video. Uh, do all that stuff as well. Uh, Paul, thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, absolutely. This was a lot of fun. I've Great. been like really excited to do this with you guys for a while. Oh, yeah. It was a good time. Definitely, man. Dre, thank you. Uh, check it, out Let the Ball Bounce every Saturday, 2 p.m. West Coast time. They're going to have a new look this week. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Let the Ball Bounce Saturdays. Uh, right here on Gorilla Cross Sports and on the Let the Ball Bounce YouTube channel as well. Uh, so make sure you check it out. Uh, and I'm Quan59 for Dre and Paul. Into the West Comics is coming into the building right now. Yes, sir. Uh, so go Tune to in. Into the West Comics on YouTube if you want to hear about comics and how bad Marvel and DC movies are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and anything else. You want to nerd out a little bit after just jocking out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Move over to there. Peace. Peace.